Hey there. Hi. So this is part two on our discussion that we started last week about um, producing sounds, articulating sounds. And this is really about the child who struggles to discriminate right. between two sounds or, or maybe mm -hmm. um, a few sounds in one sound, right? Mm -hmm. Because of how sounds come together, they can sound like other things. So right. the first thing... So just to clarify, they sure. may actually be able to articulate two sounds that they cannot t discriminate the difference between, between those yes. same two sounds. So yeah, that's what so I was that about to confusing. define. Is discrimination right. is different than articulation and also hearing. So mm -hmm. um, when you can t discriminate between two sounds, that doesn't necessarily mean that you're not actually hearing those two sounds. And we right. often have people say, I don't think my child can hear this sound. Well, that's, there's a difference between hearing acuity, which is your ability to actually receive the stimulation of that sound within mm -hmm. the uh, anatomy of your inner ear, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. um, versus being able to kind of process, sound process that sound and, and manipulate it, use it however you need to within, you know, a word. understanding right. or within a word in text, etc. And that is what we call sound um, processing, right? Mm -hmm. That's happening at the level of the brain, not the level of the ear. Okay? Yes, right. It's the brain interpreting what interpreting it's hearing. What it's getting. That's what's yes. difficult when it's processing. Right, right. So anytime you do have you know, some of these issues you're trying to tease through, you do actually always want to rule out if there is an oral acuity struggle or, mm -hmm. or sorry, the issue, right? A blockage, something mm -hmm. happening, going on um, within the ear canal that might be causing some breakdown of the, the, what they're interpreting, what they're getting, right. right? So you can have fluid going on. If you, especially if you have any, a child with chronic ear infections or any, that's kind of a sign, any of that, they they're don't seem to be. compromised by allergies, a right. lot of allergies, then you have a sense that they could be having some yep, yep. fluid that fluctuates on a daily basis. They don't seem to be turning to loud noises or right. things like that you know to always go get that stuff checked out and sometimes you can come up against doctors thinking you know like why is this necessary they passed their newborn hearing screening peace of mind stuff comes up later on in development it's not get always it checked obvious. out right. yes right so you want to rule that out and just so you know most speech pathologists are pretty strong proponents of having tubes put in the ears for chronic ear infections yeah. because we know that ongoing uh fluctuating um fluid in the ear can really mess with the way the brain processes sound and you don't want to mess with early speech processing no, i mean that's no. that those are prime times right 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 so we really want kids to have as strong of discrimination as they can and we don't want this constant fluctuation uh, of hearing because of inner ear fluid or middle ear fluid right. we don't want that constantly um giving confusing messages to our our, our kids brains on on this this discrimination right, right some typical sounds that kids have trouble discriminating between is um they can have difficulty with some vowels so the most common one is a difficulty discriminating between the short i and the short e and what happens is there are some sounds that have very similar acoustic features okay at the at the physics level of sound their acoustic features are just similar enough that they're more likely to be troublesome to kids if kids are going to have processing weakness. Typically because they are produced very similarly in the mouth. Yes, right? typically, but it can also be just because just the result, the acoustic result is very, right. very similar. So short I versus short E is typical. I, e. Yes, the short E versus the short A can happen. E, A. Right. You can have the F versus what we call an unvoiced or unvibe, you know, our vocal folds aren't vibrating for the TH, like in the word uh, bath. Right. Versus the F, okay? The voiced TH, where our vocal cords are vibrating, the th that you hear in the word bathe, right? That can be difficult to discriminate against the V sound. Um, some kids, if they have articulation problems, may have difficulty discriminating the W from the R, um, but that usually is based more in their own articulation weaknesses. Right. 
Other kits, a, a typical problem though can be with R blends. So it's not unusual that TR blend for many kids sounds like a CH. And sometimes if we say them fast in sentences, we may even pretty closely produce what sounds like a CH sound. And the same thing is true for the DR blend can sound a lot like a J sound, the J sound. Right, okay? right. And that has actually more to do with what we call co-articulation. Basically, that when you have multiple sounds being produced close together, it's hard in running speech to actually separate them enough for it to, to be easily discriminated mm -hmm. and to sound like that. Right. And then different. they acoustically just begin to take on these features that right. are similar to other sounds. Right, okay? right, right. Um, oh, so yeah. I was going to go on. So one of the things we do... Um, very um, aggressively, <laughs> is we work a lot with letter tiles. So in Pinwheels 3, for example, we have this whole lesson about these blends versus sounds. In fact, it's called blends versus sounds. And it's like really working on this DR blend versus the J sound, the J sound. And we build with letter tiles over and over and over again, or we're reading across our letter tiles and we're really waking kids up to feeling two sounds versus, versus one. one. Yes. Okay. Or I might be using letter tiles where I'm really building this vowel sound of the short E, the E, eh, and I'm prolonging it as I'm building it. Um, and as I'm hearing and writing it, I'm encouraging kids to prolong that vowel sound so they're really hearing this difference. Yeah. And by the way, the vowel song we teach, when kids have difficulty discriminating between vowels, these short vowel sounds, we use those little sound cues, eh, eh, edge, and the, the um, visual cues, eh, eh, edge, right? Um, we use those more, does it her way, I do it mine, doesn't matter, whatever it is that you do. Um, so that if I say a word like bet, bet, eh, and kids are starting to write, I can go eh, and I'm giving them this verbal and visual cue, cue, right? Because I really want them to get it. And, and learning the letter that goes with it, helps too. Right, right. So letter tile work really helps give that articulatory time, mm -hmm. slowing down and really actually, you know, doing that left to right processing of sounds, right? When I have to pull tiles and go d, er, ip, it gives me the time to produce those as two distinct sounds as right. opposed to drip sounds a lot like j, right. right? And we want to contrast between the two troublesome sounds and do it frequently. Right. So you want to have lots of frequent practice. Every week, pull those tiles out with those couple letters just it's over a, and over again. It's a great know? point that these kinds of things tend to not be resolved within one quick little lesson, mm -hmm. right? Um, when kids are really struggle with mm -hmm. these, need a lot of consistent, constant, mm -hmm. all the time practice so that their brains really start to make associations and mm -hmm. patterns and categorize this information. You can't kind of get that all at once. Right. And don't let it hold you back. Keep moving on in your reading progress and they keep coming upon the same problem and you take every opportunity to work on it again. Right. Because if you just wait till that resolves, it could take it could take anywhere from a month to a year to three years to, you know, who knows. Right, some, right. some kids have real trouble with certain sounds, especially if they're struggling with those vowel sounds. So aside from letter tiles, you also want to work within word pairs that are, you know, sort of matched that only differ by the two sounds that you're mm -hmm. trying to discriminate, right? Mm -hmm. So a pair like chain and train differ by the ch and the tr blend, right? Pin and pen differ by that it and ed that you're discriminating against and you know you want to be prepared it's hard to come up with these kinds of things off the top of your head so get some chains kind of marked out for yourself and then work on having your child produce them underlining sounds use letter tiles again build those mm -hmm. words on letter tiles have them read them have you say them and they pick which one they thought right. you said and, and they don't have to be real words use no. nonsense words you have to, in kind this of, case to so get enough you, yeah so you get enough of them right, to right, practice right. right makes it easier on you to come up with those chains mm -hmm. if you allow nonsense mm -hmm. words to be part of it right and and use all parts of it use production them producing it mm -hmm. use them reading it use them writing it use them hearing you say it use all parts of the language system right 
right. because that's what's building into that right. discrimination. Also, be aware of dialects because I think there I was are kind of bring that there up are regions in the South where pin and pen, in particular, sure. aren't really that different in the way they're pronounced. But be also aware that you too might have some pronunciation weaknesses or not pronunciation, discrimination weaknesses. So ask your friends in your region, your community. you know, yeah. do you hear this difference? Because it's not unusual that a parent could have some subtle processing problems too. And um, so both of you are struggling to hear the difference. Right, okay? right, right. Okay. All right. So the last idea, I think, is uh, check out Soundbugs. Um, it is a relatively inexpensive product that has a couple games in it that's very focused on sound. Yep. And you can use those manipulatives and those games and modify it for the two sounds that are particularly difficult Whatever for you. consonant or, or a vowel work you need right. to do. So we have, for example, a game that's called SWAT, where we have um, bugs that you lay out, and in this case, they're all short vowel sounds. And if I say a word, the child has to use a fly swatter and swat the bug that has that letter on it. So what I could do is use those bugs, put on the two letters that are difficult. So I could put on, say, a TH, and an F, and there's only two bugs, and I say something like think, think, and the child has to say it also and feel what their mouth is doing and then swat the TH. In any game, you can also flip, so you put your student in the teaching position, so you know you have the SWAT and they have to produce the word and then you SWAT what they said and if it's not what they intended then there's a mismatch there and that's helping give that feedback that mm -hmm. I didn't produce mm -hmm. what I meant. Right? right and only do that if your child can in fact articulate the correct sound. Right, we right. don't want to well, do that. Well if you've as, worked on that yeah, articulation. Yeah you've worked yes. on it you know so so maybe they they have been working on a good R they can make a good R but they might still not, not always pay yeah. attention to the good R. And then if you hit the bug, that gives them feedback. Ooh, I didn't quite say and it the way I was trying practice. to. And it's that slower practice. You're mm -hmm. pulling it out of running speech, which mm -hmm. helps helps things. It helps right. that discrimination. Right. It helps that articulation. Right. All right. So that is particularly important with, with the short I versus short E. Because usually kids can say both sounds, but they have trouble thinking Wait a minute, I see a short I. That's the I Twenty sound. I vein. need to make sure that the word I say has that I sound and that I didn't accidentally retrieve the E sound. Oh. So it's particularly important when they're working on vowels. One thing I'll point out too with vowels is a way to know if your child has some discrimination struggle too is what they often produce is this sort of weird amorphous middle sound for both of them. Yeah. So you often get this kind of like E. Eh for both I and E, and mm -hmm. that's because they're just really not sure which direction their mouth needs to go, right? right. So right. that's a nice little kind of cue that hmm, they have some discrimination here. Right, right. Yeah. Lots of lessons there. Hope yeah. this was helpful to you. All right, bye. bye.